Um, here comes a coin question. As a coin collector, my hobby by hobby and and not by choice. I was wondering if it would be best to buy six mint state 61 coins or mint state 64 coins. The collector, uh, the coin collector in me says mint state 64, but the investor in me says mint state 61. Also, what about the graded pre 65 silver coins, proof coins, and the same thing, collector or investor? I better answer that one. No, I'm only kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to do something. <laughs> oh, yes. No, actually, again, it comes back to, you know, when you look at Mint State 64 coins, depending on the type of coin, there's still investor coins. To me, a collector coin is when you go into the special dates, when you go into uh, uh, you're buying the coin for the history of the coin, for the, for the story of the coin. You want a coin that no one else owns and you're building a collection. That's a true coin collector. To me, a hobbyist is someone who collects the, the president's uh, uh, spouse coins, those types of things. Uh, investor coins are going in from anywhere from uh, Mint State 60 even up to Mint State 65, and in the same, you can even get into the 66s. Because we're just dealing with generic dates. We're not looking for any special dates, any better dates. Um, unless you have a substantial portfolio, and then if you want to extend it into those special dates, then that's okay as long as you keep it within a, a range. And, and the whole goal, is, goal of your portfolio should be to obtain as much gold as possible for your dollar. So um, doesn't mean you can't get 64s and 65, but it keeps you from getting and spending $5,000 for one type of coin. And then the pre-65 silver coins, I wouldn't buy them graded. You know, like what's the point? You're not buying that uh, pre-65 coins for that type of an investment. You're buying it for, for the silver content and because it's still spendable coinage. Proof coins, again, you know, they're great gifts, but I wouldn't do it as an investment to preserve my purchasing power. Um Yes, Bob, not your turn. Oh, come on. <laughs> Did I put you to sleep? I'm just teasing. I know it. Uh, ask Bob what the unemployment rate would be if no one were working and no one were looking for work. Uh, Doe thinks it would be 0%. And he says, which is why West Virginia has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the nation. I, I don't say that again. The unemployment, if the unemployment, ask Bob what the unemployment rate would be if no one were working and no one were looking for work. He thinks it would be 0%, which is why West Virginia has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the nation. It's got to be a joke. I don't know. He says, ask you. What What he's saying here is that nobody works and nobody's unemployment in West, uh, and unemployed <laughs> they in West Virginia. Put, well, they don't put it on the unemployment numbers and the percentages. Once you get to certain points, they don't count you anymore. So if I said he wasn't... Well, that could happen on long term, but they have uh, the short term, uh, the U6, and then the U3. The U3 counts long-term unemployment. It's about 25% right now. And that goes back to 1990. So they do have a gauge for that. So uh, if it's not a joke, then he would use the um, U3 gauge. And, of course, add three points to it, four points to it, because they lie about everything. And, uh, and uh, the U6 is already up to 20. There must be West Virginia workers who are in U6, they must. It's kind of sketchy to me. I, I'd like to answer it more thoroughly, but I can't. So, Joe, send, us, send me an email for Monday's program. Is China using its treasury bonds as collateral to borrow money to buy commodities? No, I think that China has plenty of money, and... Um, uh, they might be uh, pledging 
uh, U.S. Treasuries as collateral against purchases of, say, copper, which they've been, you know, doing a big purchase of. Uh, copper just went from 136 to 222. It's a 50% move almost. And uh, actually, to be exact, it's about 35. That's a big move. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they said, well, look, you hold these to maturity and they figure out the mathematics in it. And uh, then the uh, owner of the copper can either roll the treasuries or take cash for it or whatever. And, of course, the owner of the copper can use that as collateral in his account for buying and selling copper. So that's what they could be doing. Plus, with these increased uh, commodity prices with copper, I mean, that should affect the gold prices, too, to the upside, too. That's right. But uh, historically, that's true. But the, the rules have changed because we have a corporatist, fascist government. And they intercede in all markets. So you don't know what the markets are. They are what they want them to be. Now, that's going to come to an end. And how it will come to an end is probably in revolution. And you have because to to at the moment, unless we have some untoward act, that something happens out there, Congress says, no, we're not going to do that anymore. Uh, we're going to vote to get rid of the Federal Reserve, and we're going to stop all of this uh, government financing of big banks and and in, in brokerage firms, we're going to let them go under, and and we're going to bring these people to trial for treason for rigging the markets, and, and you know that could happen. Don't keep your fingers crossed. I don't think it will. They're all bought and paid for. They're all political whores, and they're going to do what's ever you know propitious for them, staying in office so they can steal. That's just the way it is. You know, with China buying up all this copper and all these other commodities, um, you know, they begin to manufacture things like they did the drywall in an inferior manner. And guess who buys it? And um, so... Well, the Chinese don't and never have cared no. about the markets. Uh, you know, they'll sell you something that's triple A and when it's triple B. And they just don't care. Uh, they have no uh, compunction, no morality, period. Communists are very like, much like the super capitalists are, who are sending us uh, uh, toward uh, world depression. Uh, they, they never can have enough power. It's, it's the same mindset. Um. Here's a question for both of us regarding gold versus silver and the proper amounts to have of each. What is what would you recommend for 60-year-olds to have and in what quantity? Can you elaborate? Uh, silver is great when we are in hyperinflation, but will fall flat during deflation. Would that be a fair analysis? Oh, we're out of time. The answer, the answer is yes. So we use the melody formula of 60% in gold, or 70% in gold, and 30% in silver. 80-20. 80-20, sorry. But also, also there's people out there calling clients to sell their gold because the economy is getting better, and silver will take off because the economy is getting better. And so folks, That's called churning. Yes, it is. Don't do it. It's wrong. It's wrong. We'll be back on Monday. Until then, be safe. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Bob. Give us a call at 800-375-4188 for your complimentary issue and your gold and silver coin. Thank you, Bob. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.